Hello, everyone. There are quite a number of you here. I'm going to present a talk called Hyperbolic Geometry. When I was 14, it was my favorite subject. I don't know if I can actually give the talk now because I was much smarter when I was 14. <laughs> so the, the introductory slide will show up, and then you'll have to wait through it for the entire time. Uh, hyperbolic Geometry is the study of curved spaces and space-time, which are fantastic subjects that you all should learn about which you will in a minute. Five, four, three, two, one. M.C. Escher, if you've seen M.C. Escher, you have seen hyperbolic geometry. Here on the left is something that he's well known for, and on the right there's a Poincaré projection. It's basically like looking at a biodome from above, and everybody loves biodomes. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a great guy named Euclid, and he made the best mathematical textbook in history. We still use it today. In fact, it was so good that nobody even considered you know, challenging it. So it stayed that way for over a thousand years. This is what hyperbolic geometry changed. Five postulates, two points make a line, there's a line that goes to infinity forever, you have equidistant points around something, it becomes a circle and all right triangles are equal. Great, that's fantastic, but there's a fifth postulate. And the fifth postulate is about two parallel lines going forever in space to infinity that never, ever, ever intersect. And for some odd reason, nobody said, oh, well, uh, in curved space, maybe they could intersect, but they didn't, so this stayed there for a really long time. In fact, it took somebody outside the mathematical community, this really poor guy, who was awesome, prodigy mathematician, who ended up having to go in the army because he was really poor, to say, hey, whoa, this is different. And he sent a, a mathematical article out to the best mathematician at the time, Carl Friedrich Gauss, saying, I've discovered something new at the age of 21. And Gauss said, oh, I came up with that two years ago. But the thing is, you can't say that in the mathematical world because you get laugh stock, like laughing stock. And then uh, Lobachevsky was like, well, I'm going to publish it. So it was called Lobachevskian geometry. And Felix Klein was like, no, it's going to be called hyperbolic geometry. So that's why we have that name. So now we have these angles. A regular triangle is always 180 degrees, but if you put it on a negative space, it becomes less than 180 degrees. And this is what frightened mathematicians in the 1800s. They said, my god, you could even do it on a positive space, and it would be 270 degrees. Oh, jeez. And this was, this was a big deal, right? <laughs> So after that, Ryman was like, well, I'm going to do some geometry that deals with curved spaces. And he came up with this idea called hyperbolic manifolds, which are really impossible to describe, nonetheless even talk about a three-dimensional space in which we live in. But they were really useful for this guy called Einstein. He said, wow, now I have a geometry and a mathematics to, dis to explain curved spaces and also spherical spaces. So he created the general theory of relativity. That's why hyperbolic geometry is really, really important. <laughs> So then it was even better. For instance, this is a simple hyperbolic octagon. And this woman was like, well, geez, I have to teach this class at Cornell, and I really need to figure out how to teach it. So she sat there one night and knitted these hyperbolic surfaces. No one had been able to do this before. She revolutionized not only knitting, but mathematics at the same time. <laughs> And these coral reefs are being created all over the world. It's a global phenomenon. In fact, people are downloading patterns like mad. There's even a pattern for hyperbolic pets. You can, too, download these pants. And you can even move these little sliders around and, and change the formula so that your child can fit into the hyperbolic pants and be laughed at for years and years and years. So the ancient city model, you have a big hill, you have God at the top, you have priests, warriors, merchants, servants, and untouchables. This is, this is how old cities were, you know, the top of the hill was closest to God, etc., etc. Well, now we have exactly the same system set up for our social networks, where we have ourself, and then our friends, and then our colleagues, and then the public, and then the untouchables, which are the people that we'll never meet ever. And it looks just like a hyperbolic plane, so you can actually look at social networks just like hyperbolic geometry which is really, really important breakthrough in the world of mapping things. In fact, here's a map of the internet. This was data sent through uh, 12,000 computers with probes, and, and they made this very interesting uh, version of the internet that you can only express through hyperbolic geometry, and also gravitational poles and things like that. Uh, and this one is the code red virus, which in uh, 2001 infected over 300,000 computers within 12 hours, and they mapped out its infection rate through hyperbolic geometry using this nice little graphic here. 
And this is a more full view of the internet, which is quite beautiful in hyperbolic geometry. And then there's this little cell on the side to the right, a eukaryotic cell, which is the basis of all animal life. But I can't make that analogy for you. You're going to have to do it yourself because time is up. And I have to tell you about this cool thing called Cyborg Camp. You should go. It's in October 2010. Thanks so much, everyone.